Hello everyone, and today I'm going to provide a nephrology update from Kidney Week 2023, the American Society of Nephrology uh, that was held in uh, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Uh, I'm Dr. Mohamed Tinawi. I'm a nephrologist in Northwest Indiana. I do not uh, work or represent the American Society of Nephrology. I'm going to present the abstracts that I deemed of great value to the practicing nephrologist. So let's get started. The first abstract was Sparsentan in focal segmental glomerulosclerosis, or the duplex trial. This trial was very important and was published uh, just now in the uh, New England Journal of Medicine. I'll provide the uh, link uh, below so you can go and look uh, actually at the actual uh, study. Now, uh, as you know, this uh, duplex study was a phase three trial in patients with primary focal segmental glomerulosclerosis. Now, note the large number of patients, 371 patients. For FSGS, this is unprecedented, okay? Previously, we're lucky to have 50 patients. So this is really probably the largest study in FSGS, so primary FSGS, that is. Patients were between 8 and 75 years of age. The randomization was sparsentan, which is a dual endothelin and angiotensin receptor uh, antagonist, so you cannot use it with herbisartan because it already has an ARB uh, function. So sparsentan, the target was 800 milligrams per day. It's oral, it's a pill, uh, versus herbisartan, uh, 300 milligrams. And the study was long for 108 weeks. The surrogate endpoint was urine protein to creatinine ratio less than 1.5 gram per gram, or uh, and, uh, and a 40% reduction in that ratio from baseline. Now, the primary endpoint was the eGFR glomerular filtration rate slope at the time of final analysis at 108 weeks. Now, fortunately, this was a positive study. At 36 weeks, they did an analysis and they found partial remission of proteinuria in 42% in the sparsentan group and 26% in the herbisartan group. P-value was significant, and this response was sustained throughout the study. Now, at 108 weeks, there was no difference between the groups as far as the EGFR slope. So the study was positive as far as reduction in proteinuria, but not EGFR. Safety profile was similar in both groups. The conclusion is in patients with primary, okay, I stress primary FSGS, sparsentan reduced proteinuria without affecting renal function when compared to herbisartan. So that was the duplex trial. Moving on. Here we have another trial, the Envision trial, and this is a phase two trial of map. I managed to pronounce that, I think, in patients with IgA nephropathy. Now, cybrinolimab is a humanized IgG2 monoclonal antibody that binds and neutralizes APRIL. What is APRIL? It's proliferation-inducing ligand, which is implicated in the pathogenesis of IgA nephropathy. This phase two multicenter trial had 155 patients all of them had biopsy-proven IgA nephropathy, and they were deemed to be high risk for progression. This cyprenolimab is intravenous, so it was given at doses of 2, 4, or 8 milligrams per kilograms versus placebo once a month for 12 months. Proteinuria reduction was significant, 47 to 62 percent, depending on the dose. So the higher the dose, the uh, more the reduction, versus only 20 percent in placebo. Now, GFR decline was less at 12 months in the 4 mg per kilogram and 8 mg per kilogram group. So this was a positive study, and now there's an ongoing phase 3 trial, and I provide uh, the number that you can look up at clinicaltrials.gov. Next study is eGFR decline in patients with IgA nephropathy treated with nefacon or placebo results from the 2-year Nephilgard phase 3 trial. So as you know, budesonide downregulates production of IgA1 antibodies in the distal ileum. This study had 360 adults with primary IgA nephropathy. Now to diagnose this, you need a biopsy, of course. EGFR 35 to 90. 
proteinuria was equal to or more than a gram per day despite RAS inhibition. Blood pressure had to be less than 140 over 90. Now, this is a phase three trial. The intervention with uh, the budesonide, uh, this novel uh, formulation of budesonide, 60 milligram per day versus placebo for nine months, and then patients were followed for an additional 15 months. So here, in this trial, they used a novel formulation, a novel targeted release formulation of budesonide called Nefecon. And uh, this formulation slowed the decline in EGFR compared to placebo in patients with IgA nephropathy. So now this medicine not only reduces proteinuria, but also uh, we have evidence now that it slows EGFR decline. Uh, so that's really good. So at this conference, we have really good news for uh, IgA nephropathy. So 30% uh, reduction in GFR from baseline was lower in the budesonide group compared to placebo. Uh, in the budesonide group, this reduction uh, happened in 11.5% versus 21.4% in the uh, placebo group. Next, uh, we have uh, an abstract I thought was very significant. It's Andan Citron or um, uh, Zofran and sudden cardiac death in dialysis patients. I provide the abstract number, and uh, you can uh, look that up on the ASN uh, website, asn-online.org. So uh, this uh, study uh, really studied uh, Zofran or Ondansetron because it's used very commonly in dialysis patients. It is known that this medicine is associated with QT prolongation. So they looked at the United States Renal Data System, uh, at the data from the USRDS from uh, 2012 uh, through 2019, and they identified 65,000 patients who initiated treatment with Ondansetron uh, versus 54,000 who initiated a different antiemetic uh, medication. Now, the absolute 10-day risk of sudden cardiac death was significantly higher Okay, not by much. The weighted risk difference was only 0.06%, so the adjusted hazard ratio was 1.45%. Okay, so what does that mean to us? If you initiate Undan Citron in 1,672 patients, you are going to have one sudden cardiac death. Well, this may not seem like much, but again, it's a death. Um, and this is association, not causation. So one might conclude that uh, promethazine, metoclopramide, or perchlorperazine uh, are safer because they're less likely to cause QT prolongation. Um, I'm not sure about that. Metoclopramide has many problems. Uh, promethazine uh, can have problems too. So uh, I take from that to use um, ondansetron cautiously, not willy-nilly. I mean, uh, but this is only a like, retrospective analysis, so we'll stay tuned. Next, um, we have the pivotal results of the phase three PROTECT trial of SPAR-SENTAN, uh, we're going to call it SPAR here, versus herbisartan in patients with IgA nephropathy. Like I said, uh, this conference was all about IgA nephropathy, and we have uh, good news. Uh, so um, uh, earlier uh, results were published in uh, Lancet, and I'll provide the, the uh, link below. So uh, we'll delve in here. Uh, PROTECT was a phase three trial, and by the way, SPAR-SENTAN now is FDA approved for IgA nephropathy, so now you will know uh, why. PROTECT is a phase three randomized trial in 404 patients. Notice like when we talked about FSGS, this is a very uh, big number for uh, glomerulonephritides, okay? Uh, so now we have trials that have uh, 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 hundreds of patients, okay? Uh, we used to envy cardiologists. Well, now we are still very envious, but less so. Okay, um, anyway, uh, so uh, here we studied Sparsentan versus Herbisartan in adults with IgA uh, nephropathy who are deemed to be high risk for progression. All patients, again, had biopsy-proven IgA nephropathy. Urine protein creatinine ratio had to be equal or more than one gram per day. EGFR had to be at or over 30 uh, ml per minute per 1.73 meters squared. 
Uh, now, the dose they reached here um, was uh, less than with the uh, FSGS. Um, anyway, it was 400 milligrams with the uh, Sparsentan uh, versus 300 uh, milligrams uh, for Erbisartan. This is, of course, the maximum dose for Erbisartan either way. Um, and uh, they followed the patients for 110 weeks. Proteinuria reduction was very significant with the Sparsentan, about 50% versus 15% with Herbisartan. Complete remission was also achieved about three times more with Sparsentan, 31% versus 11% with uh, Herbisartan. What about EGFR uh, decline? Well, it was less with Sparsentan, 5.8 ml. Uh, per minute uh, per 1.73 meters squared over the duration of the study. So 110 weeks versus uh, uh, almost double that, 9.5 ml per minute uh, for uh, Herbisartan. So another uh, positive study. Um, another study here is aldosterone synthase inhibition with or without background sodium glucose co-transporter 2 inhibition in CKD FAs 2 clinical trial. Now, here we are testing the efficacy and safety of a novel aldosterone synthase inhibitor. This is a pill. Uh, you're all familiar, say, with spironolactone. This is something different. We don't even have a name for it. It's BI690517. And um, the study uh, has 714 patients. Uh, they were all on RAS inhibition, and then they were randomized to receive either empagliflozin or placebo, and then randomized again to receive uh, BI690517 or a placebo. Uh, so uh, BI690517 was well tolerated and reduced uh, proteinuria on top of RAS inhibition and empagliflozin. So it was additive, actually. The response rate with the BI690517 alone was 50%. In patients who were randomized to receive empagliflozin, it was 70%. So encouraging uh, results indeed. Now, moving on, uh, we have this abstract on sotagliflozin, uh, yet another SGLT2 inhibitor. Um, and this study found that sodagliflozin, like uh, its uh, uh, brothers, empagliflozin and dapagliflozin, so I call them like empa, uh, dapa, uh, and now uh, we'll call this soda. Uh, so soda uh, reduces composite kidney cardiorenal outcomes in CKD patients with type 2 diabetes mellitus, and I provide the abstract number. You can go and read it at your leisure. Moving on, um, another uh, abstract I found worth mentioning is glycated albumin and adverse clinical outcomes in patients with CKD. We all know that hemoglobin A1c is not very good in patients with CKD, especially in dialysis. You check it, it's always kind of good, but the diabetes control is terrible. So uh, actually a better test, uh, hopefully we can get used to it and get it, uh, will be glycated albumin because it helps predict ESRD in patients who already have chronic kidney disease. It helps in prediction of cardiovascular events and even mortality. And uh, feel free to go to the abstract and read more about this uh, important uh, study. Uh, next uh, abstract is the effect of GLP-1 receptor agonist dulaglutide on profile of circulating miRNAs associated with end-stage kidney disease in type 2 diabetes mellitus. Um, so this also uh, was a positive study. So uh, dulaglutide may protect against ESRD in patients with CKD, uh, in, in patients with type 2 diabetes mellitus. And uh, recently, we also heard about positive renal results with semaglutide. So uh, this is very encouraging because many of our patients are on GLP-1 receptor agonists for diabetes, weight reduction, and uh, also um, they are on uh, SGLT uh, uh, antagonists. Um, so uh, this is all helping. It's all additive. It's coming together uh, nicely. Um, next uh, abstract is kidney-related outcomes in patients with active lupus nephritis uh, treated with obinutuzumab, I think I managed to say that, obinutuzumab, uh, a post hoc analysis of the phase 2 nobility trial. Um, as you know, in lupus nephritis, uh, rituximab really didn't uh, pan out. Um, so uh, here um, we have encouraging uh, result. 
So uh, obinutuzumab uh, recipient had significantly lower risk of kidney-related outcomes, including death, treatment failure, doubling of serum creatinine, actually hazard ratio uh, was 0 0.40, so reduction by 60%. Lupus nephritis flare uh, hazard ratio was 0 0.43, so also a reduction of 57%. First eGFR rate decline was 30%, uh, uh, also hazard ratio was uh, 0 0.20. Uh, so uh, this is really encouraging, okay? The complete response rate um, with standard uh, immunosuppression uh, is low with lupus, as you know. And this post hoc analysis shows that this novel agent may be helpful, and I'm sure there will be uh, a phase uh, 3 trial. Last but uh, not least is aldosterone antagonist chronic hemodialysis interventional survival uh, trial, uh, the ALCHEMIST trial. Uh, this was in 644 patients, followed for 33 months. Spironolactone did not reduce the primary endpoint, uh, so non-fatal heart attack, acute coronary syndrome, non-fatal strokes, cardiovascular death, but uh, patients had less hospitalization uh, for heart failure if they were on spironolactone. Um, I'll end here. Uh, please comment, uh, subscribe to the channel, share the video, like the video, do what you need to do. Uh, see you later.